Ben Shapiro had his, I believe it's the second episode of the uh, election special, and he is going to break down the uh, the Dr. Ford and the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, and it is going to be quite a travesty. He is going to, of course, uh, stick with the Lindsey Graham memo and not actually address anything that was stated by Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, throughout the capacity and the con you know what was said in the actual hearing, instead he sticks to this sort of talking point that makes him feels very feel very nice and uh, basically be able to just shovel away all of the mounds of shit that Brett Kavanaugh has been doing uh, that we have clearly seen whether it be him uh, there's credible evidence against him first of all there's also uh, easily he committed multiple counts of perjury. And the third thing is the, the characteristics and the actions exhibited by Brett Kavanaugh are clearly, uh, incompatible with the Supreme Court. He is not fit to be a Supreme Court justice. However, let's let this roll. The midterm elections are just 36 days away and Democrats are looking with hopeful eyes toward that blessed day, a day they hope will shift the balance of power in the House and particularly in the Senate. The polls don't look great for them in the Senate. They'd have to run the table in order to take that chamber. But if they do, they plan to stymie President Trump's agenda. In particular, they want to stymie his Supreme Court nominees. That task begins with stopping the confirmation of Judge Brett Kavanaugh. For weeks, Democrats have been engaged in delay tactics designed to push off Kavanaugh's confirmation beyond November 6th. It began with Senator Dianne Feinstein, who received a 36-year-old allegation of sexual abuse on July 30th from Christine Blasey Ford then did nothing, nothing about it for weeks upon weeks until it was nearly time to confirm Kavanaugh. Then she suddenly came forward with the allegations demanding a hearing. Republicans attempted to facilitate one, so Democrats delayed. Meanwhile, Democrats demanded a full FBI investigation, an investigation they hoped would take weeks on end. Well, now such an FBI investigation is pointless. A non-criminal FBI investigation actually has less power to compel testimony than the Senate Judiciary Committee. The FBI can't subpoena records or force people to testify. The FBI doesn't come to findings on allegations. They merely compile statements, the same statements already given under penalty of perjury by witnesses who don't actually back Ford's account. If those witnesses change their testimony now, they may be perjuring themselves. An FBI investigation was completely superfluous. It was a transparent attempt to waste time. But all Democrats had to do was peel off one sucker among the Republicans. Enter Senator Jeff Flake. On Friday, despite already having stated he would support Kavanaugh's nomination in the absence of any corroborating evidence from Ford, Flake collapsed. So why did Flake collapse? Because some protesters screamed at him in an elevator. I'm not kidding. At all. You're telling me that my assault doesn't matter, that what happened to me doesn't matter, and that you're going to let people who do these things into power? That's what you're telling me when you vote for him. Well, that's not actually what Jeff Flake was telling her. In fact, what Jeff Flake was telling her was that there was no corroborative evidence about the allegations. But according to Western Journal, one of the women yelling at Flake is a professional activist with a leftist organization to which George Soros donates. So there's that. But with the courage of his convictions, Jeff Flake demanded a week-long FBI investigation. It didn't help him with the left, by the way. Yesterday, he appeared in an event with Democratic Senator Chris Coons and received a less than pleasant response. So keep reaching out, because we hear you, and we need to keep hearing from you. So feel free to join me in an elevator anytime. Oh, the sweet sounds of bipartisanship. So, will the FBI investigation satisfy people who oppose Kavanaugh? Of course not. It's all about the stall. Just like clockwork, Ford's lawyer said the investigation shouldn't have any timeline or any restrictions. This will be the talking point from Democrats all week, and we can surely expect more uncorroborated allegations to be brought forward by Democrats. After all, they've spent the last two weeks humoring allegations up to and including gang rape. Now, all this may sound cynical to you, but there is literally nothing to which senatorial Democrats will not stoop to stop Brett Kavanaugh. Nothing. Their behavior this week has been nothing less than despicable. Democratic senators asked Kavanaugh whether he was a gang rapist. They suggested that because he drank in high school, he was an attempted rapist, which would make like 85% of the American populace possible rapists. They even asked him questions about his high school yearbook. 
have you, I don't know if it's boofed or boofed, how do you pronounce that? Judge? That refers to flatulence. We were 16. Okay. And so when uh, your friend Mark Judge said the same, put the same thing in his yearbook page back to you, he had the same meaning. It was flatulence. I don't know what he did, but that's my recollection. We want to talk about flatulence at age 16 on a yearbook page. I'm, I'm game. These are very, very serious people. Then, when Kavanaugh got angry, Democrats said that his anger was evidence that he could rape women. Seriously. Here is former Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer from my home state of California. All of a sudden, we see a man transformed from a choir boy who, up to now, has said, after hours in front of the committee, he lived this very perfect life. All of a sudden, his anger is triggered. And what we saw today is someone who you could now see attacking a woman. This is insane. It's disgusting. And it really is nothing less than a witch hunt. If Kavanaugh wasn't angry at being called a rapist, that would probably mean he was a rapist, according to the left. If he got angry, that would also probably mean that he was a rapist. But Senator Feinstein, who manipulated the entire process and facilitated claims that Kavanaugh is a rapist, and then, to complete the circus, invited charmed actress Alyssa Milano to sit behind Kavanaugh and scowl during his testimony. This is the mark of a very, very serious senator, of course. She now says that Brett Kavanaugh is unfit for the high court because he didn't treat her with the proper respect. This was not someone who reflected an impartial temperament or the fairness and even-handedness one would see in a judge. This was someone who was aggressive and belligerent. I have never seen someone who wants to be elevated to the highest court in our country behave in that manner. I agree with Senator Feinstein. Kavanaugh didn't show the proper respect for Feinstein and her Democratic colleagues. The proper amount of respect was none. No respect. Democrats have earned no respect. They deserve no respect. They have lied and they have slandered Brett Kavanaugh for weeks. And it's not just the Democratic members of the Senate. It's the leftist members of the mainstream media who have unleashed full-scale sexist and indeed racist attacks in order to prevent Kavanaugh's nomination. On Saturday, Maureen Dowd of the New York Times wrote that Kavanaugh's passionate self-defense was just another example of, quote, entitled white men acting like the new minority, howling about things that are being taken away from them, aggrieved at anything that diminishes them or saps their power. Kavanaugh is howling because Democrats have tried to strip him of his basic American rights, the presumption of innocence and due process to suggest, as Maureen Dowd does, that white men are not entitled to such rights because they're members of a disfavored group. We have a word for that. It's called sexism and racism. Yet that has become a key Democratic talking point in the past few weeks. Accused people have rights unless they hold the wrong political perspective. And if those accused men like Brett Kavanaugh are angry at false accusations, that's just evidence of their misogyny, in the words of University of Chicago professor Martha Nussbaum in Saturday's Washington Post. Kavanaugh isn't a man defending his reputation, his livelihood, and his family. He's just a mean male motivated by, quote, fear-driven rage. The left is willing to tear away the veneer of civilization in order to achieve Brett Kavanaugh's defeat. Even the ACLU, a group supposedly dedicated to protecting the rights of the accused, a group that doesn't even take positions on judicial nominees, broke its long-standing policy this weekend thanks to the allegations against Kavanaugh. Yep, you heard that right. An organization that has spent decades defending people accused of crimes against due process violations now says Brett Kavanaugh should be kept off the Supreme Court without any, any corroborative evidence of a 36-year-old allegation. So, will the bet pay off for Democrats? Who knows? Maybe Republicans will stand up a week from now. Maybe Kavanaugh will still sit on the court. But one thing is for certain. Democrats who sold their soul to maintain federally protected abortion on the Supreme Court cannot, cannot be trusted with power. If Democrats take the Senate, more than the Supreme Court is at stake. If they can ruin Brett Kavanaugh by running roughshod over his rights, what do you think they'll do to your rights? Show up to vote on November 6th. The FBI investigation is in no means a stall tactic, as you put it. It's a legitimate way to get more information uh, to figure out whether or not this is something that is uh, credible so we can match up, get all of the possible evidence and information possible. Because 
while he is right, they can't force anyone to testify or anything like that. The only people heard by the Senate Judiciary Committee were uh, were Dr. Ford and Brett Kavanaugh. And they just, you know, there was a, a source that said that basically the FBI reached out to Deborah Ramirez, who's the second accuser. So, and they, they get to speak to a bunch of different people who are willing to talk because not, first of all, not everyone's willing to do a testimony in front of Congress, uh, in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, but also, uh, it's just impossible to have everyone speak. When you have a, a situation like that and you're talking about all of the different friends of both people having to give information, tidbits of information, how the fuck are you supposed to manage that? So an FBI investigation <clears throat> is actually the best way to go about it because then they get to compile all of the information possible so that we can form a legitimate judgment on what is true based off of the information that we have. And I want to flip that back on you because why are you trying to rush it? This person is going to be appointed for life and you're acting as if you have to you have to confirm him within the next minute. It's it's pure insanity. This person is going to be appointed for life and you're trying to rush him in because there's an election coming and you are too much of a spineless piece of shit to actually stick to your word. The Republican Party did not give Merrick Garland a, Garland a fucking hearing, not even one, not an up or down vote. They just said, fuck it. It's your last year. President Obama, you have, you have almost a full year left in your term. Uh, and there's nothing that says that, you know, in the final term, final year of the term that there's no Supreme Court justice uh, appointees taken. And despite this being an election year as well, in which it would be it would be a far less amount of time being blocked uh, you know, you're not sticking to your word. So I'm going to flip that shit on you. Why are you trying to rush a lifetime appointment without giving all of the proper information? That's already been a shady process. We know that there's the really shady thing where he had like the 200 grand in baseball game ticket debts or some shit like that. And it got suddenly paid off. It really, really shady stuff going on. We didn't even have all the documents. Uh, so this is already a process that's been rammed down the throats of, of the American people. So the audacity for your bitch ass to come out here and say, oh, they're just waiting for election day. Like, what the fuck did you guys wait for that entire year that Barack Obama had in his presidency to block Mayor Gar Garland and not even give him a hearing? So I'm going to flip that back on you because you're being a massive hypocrite. So and the reason why they were asking him if he drank uh, to, you know, an excess it's not because they were insinuating that that would mean, you know, that if you drank, if you drank some beer, that that meant that you are somebody who's a sexual assaulter or a rapist. But knowing whether or not he was an excessive drunk, because excessive drinking leads you to the likeliness of that, especially at parties. And, you know, when you drink too much, you black out, obviously, to, for, you know, certain amounts. Uh, and so it's important to know all of those details when you're trying to gather as much information as possible. And what we know is, is that he committed perjury because he said that, you know, he liked beer. He didn't, he didn't state that he drank to an excess because three, now we have three classmates of his at Yale who came out and said, you know what, Brett Kavanaugh committed perjury. One of them's a, a Republican, a conservative Republican who came out and said, he committed perjury by lying to the Senate Judiciary Committee by stating that, you know, description of his drinking being like, you know, on weekends and, you know, I like beer, but, you know, I have a weak stomach, a bunch of shit. And we'll go into a bunch of the perjury stuff right now because there are multiple, multiple counts. There's more and more coming out. There's just now a report that came out today that says that. The that he had claimed that he had found Brett Kavanaugh claimed that he had found out about the allegations from Deborah Ramirez the day that the New York Times article came out. But there is now text messages from Kavanaugh's friends who are saying that actually he knew about it beforehand and he was trying to text us to get this information and to hear out about this. So that's one count of perjury right there. Number two, he said that he wasn't watching the Dr. Ford hearing, which it was clear that he was. That's perjury number two. Number three, he said that, you know, he was, someone asked, one of the sen senators asked him, I forgot who it was, uh, whether or not he had any connections to Yale. Now, 
here's the thing that people are getting confused. The question of do you have any connections to Yale and did that connection get you into Yale solely are two totally different questions. Uh, so here's the thing. And he said he had no connections. He worked his butt off, as he said, uh, to get in. He was the top of his class, you know, captain of the varsity basketball team. So he says that but fails to mention that his grandfather actually went to Yale. So he does have a connection. So again, I want to state this clearly. There's a difference between the question of, do you have a connection to Yale? And did that is that connection solely responsible for your acceptance and attendance to Yale? And the answer to that, those can be two different answers. One can be yes and one can be no. So whether or not that was the reason why he got in, even though we know that legacy admissions play heavily into admissions, into people getting in, especially those Ivy League schools, especially, uh, he had a, his grandfather actually went there. So that's that's another count of perjury. I think I've lost count at this point. That's like three. He also made up he made up stuff. So Devil's Triangle. He said that it's a drinking game. Now he asked the senator if he's played a game of quarters. Uh, because he was banking on the idea that he never played quarters because then he doesn't have to explain himself. Now, nowhere on planet Earth uh, is, or even in, in the entire solar system and all of the universe, there is no, I didn't know what the fuck Devil's Triangle was, but Urban Dictionary, uh, dating years back, has stated that it is a threesome with two dudes and one girl. And it is, it's weird. It's said that like, as long as the two guys don't, the two guys don't make eye contact, super weird, super weird stuff. Uh, but anyways, the point here being is that that's another count of perjury because no devil's triangle is not a drinking game. That's not a thing. There was a, there was a Wikipedia edit made by someone in the house of representatives and <laughs> it was taken off because it was complete bullshit. Uh, cause it was trying to do obviously revisionism at that point, but that's another count of perjury. Another one, you know, he said, here's something so stupid. It, okay, first of all, actually, before I do that, I want to say he thinks that it's like some kind of like stupid thing to ask him about his yearbook. How is that stupid? We're trying to gain information about what this man did when he was in high school because that's, you know, around the time the allegations were happening that occurred. So you're trying to get as much information about the guy. Of course, you're going to ask him about his yearbook. You fucking idiot. You imbecile. Anyways, going back to the perjury counts. So we have all those. Another one is in his uh, yearbook, He, I think he asked his friend, Mark, you think he says, like, have you boofed yet? And what he said boofing meant was flatulence, which is farting. But apparently that's, first of all, I never heard of boofing. Uh, but if you look it up on Urban Dictionary, nowhere on planet Earth is it to fart. That's not a thing. Uh, it is apparently when you, when you put something up your ass, specifically drugs or maybe some sort of anal sex, I don't know. Well, that's sort of the two different differing, uh, definitions. But the point here being is that boofing is not farting. It is indeed the other thing, uh, which would just sort of mount on the image of him that he is indeed <laughs> a crazy, you know, drunk and crazy person like that. But the point here being is. What kind of a question is that? Have you boofed yet? Like, what does that mean? Like, have you, like, what kind of a question is that? Have you farted yet? Like, people don't, what is that? Like, you, like, fart once a day or something like that? Like, there's a buildup? No, that's not how that fucking shit works. What the fuck are you talking about? That's not a legitimate, that's not a thing. And it boggles my mind that idiots think that that's, like, I know there's not many people who do unless you're blinded by your insanity, but that's not a question any person asks at any point in time in all of of history unless it's some specific like context of like you have like gas or some shit like that um and then there was the whole ralphing thing too although i'm not all that sure about that um but he never mentions any of this stuff he doesn't talk about any of this stuff he doesn't talk about the credibility of dr ford's uh, account he doesn't talk about that uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, Senator Whitehouse did a very good, uh, very good summary of that, but he doesn't talk about all the times that Brett Kavanaugh committed perjury, perjury. We're talking about a person who's going to sit on the Supreme Court of the land, Supreme Court, <laughs> Supreme Court of the country who determines the law of the land. You're putting someone on there who has committed perjury multiple times in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. 
That is insane. Okay, that is unhinged. It's extremely stupid. It is insanely dumb. And it's unacceptable. So, you know, even without the whole sexual allegations, even if you were to believe those are false, he's lying out of his ass the entire fucking hearing. Uh, He's lying his ass out of that entire hearing. And also, on top of that, his mannerisms and his... Um, and his demeanor show that he is somebody who is not fit to, to serve on the Supreme Court because he does not have the maturity, he does not have the rationality, he doesn't even have the slightest bit of bipartisan in him. He's somebody who, uh, you know, is asking senators whether or not they got blacked out drunk and whether or not they like beer. What kind of a person thinks that that's something appropriate to ask during a questioning, a testimony, a voluntary testimony um, in which you're being asked about these sexual allegations, sexual assault allegations? I'll never understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me, but this was one of the biggest abominations to ever uh, be seen on the entire planet.